most confusing words explained. Confusing words? It's easy. I will teach you. Avenge and revenge. What's the difference? Avenge. This word refers to seeking retribution or taking action to right a wrong or injustice that has been done to someone else. The motivation behind avenging is often to restore justice or balance on behalf of the aggrieved party. Example. After learning about his friend's betrayal, John vowed to avenge his friend's honor by confronting the person responsible and ensuring they faced consequences for their actions. Revenge. In contrast, revenge is about inflicting harm or punishment on someone as retaliation for a perceived injury or offense that one has personally suffered. Unlike avenging, which can involve acting on behalf of another, revenge is driven by personal vendetta or desire to settle a score. Example. Unable to forgive his ex-partner for leaving him, Mark sought revenge by spreading malicious rumors about her, hoping to tarnish her reputation and cause her distress. Analysis. In summary, while both avenge and revenge involve seeking some form of retribution, the key difference lies in the motivation behind the action and whether it is directed towards righting a wrong done to someone else, avenge, or seeking retaliation for a personal grievance, revenge. Please support us by subscribing to our channel. Click on the subscribe button. Assume and presume. What's the difference? Assume. This word means to take something for granted or to suppose something to be true without verifying it. It often involves accepting a fact or situation as true without necessarily having concrete evidence. Example, since he didn't reply to my message, I'll assume he's busy with work. Presume. Presume also involves making an assumption, but it often implies a bit more confidence or boldness in assuming something to be true. It can also carry the connotation of acting or speaking with undue confidence based on one's assumptions. Example. She presumed she would get the promotion because she had been with the company the longest. Analysis. In summary, while both assume and presume involve making assumptions, assume typically suggests accepting something as true without proof, while presume often conveys a sense of confidence or boldness in making that assumption. Affect and effect. What's the difference? Affect. Affect is a verb that means to produce a change or influence something. It refers to the action of impacting or altering a situation, emotion, or condition. Example, the rainy weather affected our plans for the outdoor picnic. Effect. Effect can be used as both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to the result or outcome of an action, event, or influence. As a verb, it means to bring about or cause something to happen. Example noun, the new policy had a positive effect on employee morale. Example verb, the manager hoped to affect changes in the company's procedures. Analysis. In summary, affect is typically used as a verb to describe the action of influencing or changing something, while effect can be used as a noun to describe the result of that action or as a verb to describe the act of causing something to happen. Amoral and immoral. What's the difference? Amoral. Amoral describes a lack of moral principles or a disregard for moral values. It suggests a neutral stance toward morality, neither adhering to nor rejecting moral codes. Example, the robot's decisions were immoral, based solely on logical calculations without considering ethical implications. Immoral. Immoral refers to behavior that violates moral principles or standards. It implies an action that is morally wrong or unethical. Example. Stealing from the poor 
is considered immoral by society. Analysis. In summary, a moral describes a state of being without a sense of morality, while immoral describes actions that are morally wrong or unethical. But and however, what's the difference? But, but is a conjunction used to indicate a contrast or exception to what has been previously stated. It is often used to introduce a conflicting or contrasting idea. Example, she wanted to go to the party, but she had to finish her homework first. However, however is an adverb that introduces a contrasting or unexpected idea. It is used to indicate a deviation from the expected course of events or to introduce a contrasting viewpoint. Example, she wanted to go to the party. However, she had to finish her homework first. Analysis. In summary, both but and however are used to introduce contrasting or conflicting ideas. But but is a conjunction while however is an adverb. However is often used to add emphasis or formality to the contrast. Discrete and discrete. What's the difference? Discrete. Discrete is an adjective that describes someone or something that is careful, cautious, or tactful in behavior or speech, often to avoid causing offense or drawing attention. Example. She was discreet about her plans to resign, not wanting to cause unnecessary concern among her colleagues. Discreet. Discreet is an adjective that describes something that is separate, distinct, or individually identifiable. It indicates that the parts or elements are independent and not connected to each other. Example, the experiment was divided into discrete stages, each focusing on a different aspect of the research. Analysis. In summary, discrete refers to being cautious or tactful, while discrete refers to being separate or distinct. Disinterested and uninterested. What's the difference? Disinterested. Disinterested is an adjective that describes someone who is impartial, unbiased, or not influenced by personal interest or gain. It suggests a lack of vested interest or involvement in a particular matter. Example, as a judge, she remained disinterested in the case, ensuring a fair and unbiased ruling. Uninterested. Uninterested is an adjective that describes someone who lacks interest, enthusiasm, or engagement in a particular topic or activity. It suggests a lack of attention or indifference. Example, he seemed uninterested in the lecture, yawning and checking his phone throughout. Analysis. In summary, disinterested describes impartiality or lack of personal involvement, while uninterested describes a lack of interest or enthusiasm. Please support us by subscribing to our channel. Click on the subscribe button. Elemental and elementary. What's the difference? Elemental. Elemental is an adjective that relates to the basic or essential aspects or forces of something. It often refers to the fundamental or primal components of nature, such as earth, water, air, or fire. Example. The artist's work was inspired by the elemental forces of nature, capturing the raw power of the ocean waves. Elementary. Elementary is an adjective that describes something that is simple, basic, or fundamental, particularly in terms of education or knowledge. It can refer to the foundational level of learning or understanding. Example. The textbook covers elementary principles of mathematics, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Analysis. In summary, elemental relates to fundamental aspects or forces of nature, while elementary refers to basic or foundational principles, particularly in terms of education or knowledge. Equable and equitable. What's the difference? Equable. Equable is an adjective that describes something that is steady, even-tempered, or not easily disturbed. 
it implies a consistent or stable state of affairs. Example. Despite the pressure, she remained equable and composed throughout the negotiation process. Equitable. Equitable is an adjective that describes something that is fair, just, or impartial, particularly in terms of distribution or treatment. It implies fairness or equality. Example, the judge ensured an equitable distribution of assets among the heirs according to the will. Analysis. In summary, equable describes something that is steady or consistent in temperament, while equitable describes something that is fair or just in distribution or treatment. Illicit and illicit. What's the difference? Illicit, illicit is a verb that means to draw out or evoke a response, information, or reaction, typically through skillful questioning, discussion, or action. Example, the detective's clever questioning elicited a confession from the suspect. Illicit. Illicit is an adjective that describes something that is unlawful, illegal, or forbidden by law or moral standards. It refers to actions or behaviors that are not permitted. Example, the police raided the warehouse and seized large quantities of illicit drugs. Analysis. In summary, illicit involves drawing out a response or information, often through skillful means, while illicit describes actions or behaviors that are illegal or forbidden by law or moral standards. Advise and advice. What's the difference? Advise. Advise is a verb that means to offer suggestions, recommendations, or guidance to someone regarding a decision, course of action, or problem. Example. I advise you to consider all the options before making a decision. Advice. Advice is a noun that refers to recommendations, suggestions, or guidance given to someone regarding a decision, course of action, or problem. Example. She gave me some valuable advice on how to manage my finances more effectively. Analysis. In summary, advise is a verb used when offering suggestions or recommendations, while advice is a noun referring to the recommendations or guidance given. Allude and elude. What's the difference? Allude. Allude is a verb that means to make an indirect reference or mention of something without explicitly stating it. It often implies hinting at or suggesting something indirectly. Example, during the speech, the speaker alluded to recent events without directly mentioning them. Elude. Elude is a verb that means to evade or escape from someone or something skillfully or cunningly. It implies avoiding capture, detection, or comprehension. Example, the criminal managed to elude the police by hiding in the forest for days. Analysis. In summary, elude involves making an indirect reference to something, while elude involves escaping or evading something skillfully. Emigrate and immigrate. What's the difference? Emigrate. Emigrate is a verb that means to leave one's own country or region to settle permanently in another. It implies leaving one's country of origin to live elsewhere. Example. Many people emigrated from Europe to the United States in search of better opportunities in the 19th century. Immigrate. Immigrate is a verb that means to enter and settle in a foreign country or region as a permanent resident. It implies arriving in a new country or region to live. Example, my grandparents immigrated to Australia from Italy in the 1950s in search of a better life. Analysis. In summary, emigrate refers to leaving one's own country to settle elsewhere, while immigrate refers to entering and settling in a foreign country as a permanent resident. Farther and further. What's the difference? 
Father. Father is an adverb or adjective used to indicate physical distance or advancement in space. It typically refers to a greater distance or more advanced position. Example, the store is farther away from my house than I thought. Further, further is an adverb or adjective used to indicate additional extent or advancement in a non-physical sense, such as in time, degree, or progress. Example, we need to conduct further research to fully understand the implications of the findings. Analysis. In summary, farther refers to physical distance or advancement in space, while further refers to additional extent or advancement in a non-physical sense. Hanger and hanger. What's the difference? Hanger. Hanger is a noun that refers to a device used for hanging clothes, typically consisting of a shaped piece of wood, plastic, or metal with a hook. Example. She hung her coat on the hanger in the closet. Hanger. Hanger is a noun that refers to a large building or structure used for housing and storing aircraft, typically equipped with facilities for maintenance and repair. Example. The airplane was parked in the hangar overnight for maintenance. Analysis. In summary, hangar is used for hanging clothes, while hangar is a building used for housing aircraft. Please support us by subscribing to our channel. Click on the subscribe button. Principle and principle. What's the difference? Principle. Principle can function as both a noun and an adjective. As a noun, it refers to a person who holds a high position or authority, such as the head of a school or organization. Example, the principal of the school announced new initiatives to improve student performance. As an adjective, it can mean first in importance, main, or chief. Example, the principal reason for the project's delay was the unexpected shortage of materials. Principal. Principle is a noun that refers to a fundamental truth, law, or rule that serves as the foundation for a belief, theory, or system of behavior. Example. She believed in the principles of honesty and integrity in all aspects of her life. It can also refer to a moral guideline or code of conduct. Example. The company's business practices were guided by the principle of transparency and accountability. Analysis. In summary, principal typically refers to a person in a position of authority or importance, while principal refers to a fundamental truth, law, or moral guideline. Stationary and stationary, what's the difference? Stationary. Stationary is an adjective that means not moving or fixed in one place, immobile. It can also refer to something that is stable or unchanging. Example, the car remains stationary at the traffic light. Stationary. Stationary is a noun that refers to writing materials and office supplies used for correspondence or writing tasks. It typically includes paper, envelopes, pens, etc. Example, she bought a set of personalized stationery for writing letters to her friends. Analysis. In summary, stationery refers to something that is not moving, while stationery refers to writing materials and office supplies. Phase and phase, what's the difference? Phase. Phase is a verb that means to disturb, disconcert, or unsettle someone typically causing them to feel embarrassed, intimidated, or uncomfortable. Example, despite the unexpected challenge, she wasn't phased and continued with confidence. Phase. Phase is a noun that refers to a distinct period or stage in a process, development, or sequence of events. It can also be used as a verb to describe the act of gradually implementing or transitioning through stages. Example, the project is entering its final phase of development. Example, 
we need to phase the changes into the system gradually to minimize disruptions. Analysis. In summary, phase is about disturbing or unsettling someone's composure, while phase refers to a distinct period or stage in a process. Fewer and less. What's the difference? Fewer. Fewer is used to indicate a smaller number of countable items or entities. It is the comparative form of few, which refers to a small number of items or entities. Example, there are fewer people attending the event this year compared to last year. Less, less is used to indicate a smaller amount or degree of something that is not countable or measurable in discrete units. It is the opposite of more. Example, she consumed less sugar in her diet to improve her health. Example, there is less water in the reservoir due to the drought. Analysis. In summary, fewer is used with countable nouns to indicate a smaller number, while less is used with uncountable nouns to indicate a smaller amount or degree. Flammable and inflammable. What's the difference? Flammable. Flammable is an adjective that describes substances or materials that are easily ignited or capable of catching fire and burning easily. Example. The gasoline tank is labeled flammable to warn people of its potential to catch fire and explode. Inflammable. Inflammable is also an adjective that means the same as flammable. It describes substances that are easily ignited and capable of burning. Example. Be careful when handling these chemicals. They are highly inflammable and can cause fires if mishandled. Analysis. In summary, both flammable and inflammable describe substances that are easily ignited and capable of catching fire. Despite the prefix in, inflammable does not mean not flammable, as it might seem, but rather has the same meaning as flammable. To avoid confusion, Many safety labels now use flammable instead of inflammable. Forego and forego. What's the difference? Forego. Forego is a verb that means to proceed or go before something in time, order, or position. It can also mean to relinquish or give up something. Example, the company decided to forego its annual holiday party in order to allocate funds for employee bonuses. Example, I had to forgo my morning jog today due to the early meeting at work. Forgo. Forgo is also a verb that means to abstain from or renounce something, to do without or refrain from partaking in something, especially by choice. Example, I chose to forgo dessert in order to stick to my diet. Example, she decided to forgo her inheritance in favor of pursuing her passion for humanitarian work. Analysis. In summary, forego typically means to proceed or give up something, while forego means to abstain from or do without something, usually by choice. Former and latter. What's the difference? Former. Former is an adjective that refers to the first of two things mentioned. It indicates the first in order of time, place, or sequence. Example, John worked as a teacher and a lawyer. In his former profession, he taught at a local high school. Latter. Latter is also an adjective used to refer to the second of two things mentioned. It indicates the last of two or the second mentioned. Example, she had two job offers, one from a law firm and the other from a marketing agency. She chose the latter because of its flexible hours. Analysis. In summary, former refers to the first of two things mentioned, while latter refers to the second of two things mentioned. Grizzly and grizzly. What's the difference? Grizzly. Grizzly is an adjective that describes something that is gruesome, horrifying, or causing disgust or fear. 
It is often used to describe violent or macabre scenes. Example. The detective described the grisly details of the crime scene, warning viewers of its disturbing nature. Grisly. Grisly is an adjective that refers to something that is related to or characteristic of a grizzly bear, which is a large North American brown bear with a distinctive hump on its shoulders. Example, we encountered a grizzly bear while hiking in the wilderness, prompting us to slowly back away. Analysis. In summary, grizzly describes something horrifying or gruesome, often related to violent scenes, while grizzly refers to characteristics of a specific species of bear. Hail and hail. What's the difference? Hail. Hail is an adjective that describes someone as healthy and robust, often used to indicate physical well-being, especially in older individuals. Example. Despite his age, the Hale gentleman enjoyed hiking in the mountains every weekend. Hale. Hale can function as a noun or a verb. As a noun, it refers to pellets of frozen rain that fall in showers from cumulonimbus clouds. As a verb, it means to greet or acclaim enthusiastically. Example, noun. The car was damaged by the large hailstones during the storm. Example, verb. The crowd would hail their leader with cheers and applause whenever he entered the room. Analysis. In summary, hail describes someone who is healthy and robust, while hail refers to frozen rain or the act of enthusiastically greeting or acclaiming someone or something. Horde and horde. What's the difference? Horde. Horde is a noun or verb that refers to a stock or store of money or valued objects, typically accumulated or stored away for future use or protection. Example, noun, the archaeologist discovered a hoard of ancient coins buried beneath the ruins. Example, verb, he tends to hoard old newspapers and magazines in his attic. Hoard. Hoard is a noun that refers to a large group crowd or mass of people or animals, often in a disorderly or unruly manner. Example. A horde of tourists flooded the streets during the peak season, making it difficult to navigate. Analysis. In summary, horde refers to a collection of valuable items kept for future use, while horde refers to a large disorderly group of people or animals. Imply and infer. What's the difference? Imply. Imply is a verb that means to suggest or indicate something indirectly without explicitly stating it. It involves conveying a message or idea without directly expressing it. Example. Her tone of voice implied that she was not happy with the decision, although she didn't say it outright. Infer. Infer is a verb that means to deduce or conclude information or meaning from evidence, reasoning, or clues provided. It involves drawing a logical conclusion based on the available information. Example, from his facial expression and body language, I inferred that he was disappointed with the outcome of the meeting. Analysis. In summary, Imply is used by the speaker to indirectly suggest or hint at something, while infer is used by the listener to draw conclusions or make deductions based on available information. Ingenious, disingenuous, and ingenuous. What's the difference? Ingenious. Ingenious is an adjective that describes someone as clever, inventive, or resourceful especially in solving problems or creating new things. Example. The engineer came up with an ingenious solution to the complex problem, impressing everyone with his creativity. Disingenuous. Disingenuous is an adjective that describes someone as insincere, deceitful, or dishonest, often by pretending to be genuine or honest when they are not. Example. 
Her apology seemed disingenuous as she continued to behave in the same hurtful manner afterward. Ingenuous. Ingenuous is an adjective that describes someone as innocent, artless, or naive, lacking in cunning or guile. Example, her ingenuous demeanor and genuine kindness made her a beloved friend to everyone she met. Analysis. In summary, ingenious describes someone as clever or inventive, disingenuous describes someone as insincere or deceitful, and ingenuous describes someone as innocent or naive. Please support us by subscribing to our channel. Click on the subscribe button. Irregardless and irrespective, what's the difference? Irregardless. Irregardless is a non-standard or informal term that is often used incorrectly instead of regardless. It means without regard or consideration for something. Example. Irregardless of the weather, the event will still take place. Irrespective. Irrespective is an adjective or adverb that means without taking into account or regardless of something. It is a more formal term compared to irregardless. Example. He treated all his employees equally, irrespective of their background or experience. Analysis. In summary, irregardless is a non-standard term that is often considered incorrect, while irrespective is a formal term used to indicate lack of consideration for something. Metal and metal. What's the difference? Metal. Metal is a noun that refers to a solid material that is typically hard, shiny, malleable, fusible, and ductile, with good electrical and thermal conductivity. Metals are often used in construction, manufacturing, and various other applications. Example, the new bridge was constructed using steel, a strong and durable metal. Metal. Metal is a noun that refers to a person's ability to cope well with difficulties or to face a demanding situation with courage, determination, and resilience. Example. Despite facing numerous setbacks, she displayed incredible metal and perseverance throughout the project. Analysis. In summary, metal refers to a type of solid material, often used in construction and manufacturing, while metal refers to a person's courage, determination, and resilience. Partly and partially. What's the difference? Partly. Partly is an adverb that means to some extent or in part, not completely or wholly. Example, the project's delay was partly due to unforeseen weather conditions. Partially, partially is also an adverb that means to a limited extent or incompletely, not fully or entirely. Example, she could only see the partially completed building from her window. Analysis, in summary, both partly and partially convey the idea of incompleteness or limited extent, but partly is used more informally and generally, while partially is slightly more formal and specific. Canvas and canvas. What's the difference? Canvas. Canvas is a noun that refers to a strong, durable fabric made from cotton, linen, or other materials, often used for sales, tents, paintings, or other applications. Example. The artist stretched the canvas tightly over the wooden frame before starting to paint. Canvas. Canvas can function as both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to a systematic, thorough examination or survey of opinions, votes, or public sentiment. As a verb, it means to solicit or seek opinions, votes, or support from a group of people. Example noun. The political candidate conducted a door-to-door -door canvas to gauge voter opinions. Example verb. Volunteers canvass the neighborhood to gather signatures for the petition. Analysis. In summary, canvas refers to a type of fabric, while canvas 
refers to the act of soliciting opinions, votes, or support. Council and council. What's the difference? Council. Council is a noun that refers to a group of people who are chosen or elected to make decisions or provide advice on behalf of a larger organization, community, or government body. Example, the City Council meets every week to discuss and vote on matters affecting the local community. Council. Council can function as both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to advice or guidance given, especially in a formal or professional context. As a verb, it means to give advice or guidance to someone. Example. Noun. He sought legal counsel before signing the contract. Example. Verb. The therapist counseled her clients on coping strategies for managing stress. Analysis. In summary, counsel refers to a group of decision makers or advisors, while counsel refers to advice or guidance given or the act of giving advice or guidance. Gorilla and gorilla. What's the difference? Gorilla. Gorilla is a noun that refers to a large, powerful ape found in the forests of Central Africa. Gorillas are known for their strength and intelligence. Example, visitors to the zoo were amazed by the size and strength of the silverback gorilla. Gorilla. Gorilla is a noun that refers to a member of a small independent military group that engages in irregular warfare tactics, such as ambushes, sabotage, and hit-and-run attacks, typically against a larger, established military force or government. Example, the guerrilla fighters launched a surprise attack on the enemy's supply convoy. Analysis. In summary, guerrilla refers to a large ape species, while guerrilla refers to a member of a small, irregular military group. Marshall and Marshall, what's the difference? Marshall. Marshall can function as both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to an officer in the police or military with duties that include maintaining order, supervising ceremonies, or overseeing operations. As a verb, it means to arrange or organize something in a systematic or orderly manner. Example, noun. The parade was led by the Grand Marshal who rode at the front on horseback. Example, verb. She marshaled her arguments carefully before presenting them to the committee. Marshal. Marshal is an adjective that relates to war, military activities, or the armed forces. Example, the martial music filled the air as the soldiers marched in formation. Analysis. In summary, Marshal refers to an officer or the act of arranging something, while marshal refers to activities, practices, or things related to war or the military. Vain and vain. What's the difference? Vain. Vain is an adjective that describes someone who is excessively proud of their appearance, abilities, or achievements, often to the point of being conceited or narcissistic. It can also refer to something that is futile, unsuccessful, or without result. Example, adjective describing a person, she was so vain that she spent hours in front of the mirror admiring herself. Example, adjective describing an action or effort, despite his vain attempts to impress his boss, he was overlooked for the promotion. Vain. Vain is a noun that refers to a blood vessel that carries blood towards the heart. It can also refer to a distinctive quality, tendency, or pattern running through something such as a mineral deposit, a leaf, or a piece of wood. Example, anatomy. The nurse inserted the needle into the vein to draw blood for testing. Example, figurative use. The comedian's jokes often contained a vein of dark humor that resonated with the audience. Analysis. In summary, vain 
describes someone excessively concerned with their appearance or efforts that are futile, while vain refers to a blood vessel or a distinctive quality or pattern running through something. Palate, palate, and palate. What's the difference? Palate. Palate is a noun that refers to a portable platform or framework of boards used to support goods during storage, handling, or transportation, especially by a forklift, pallet jack, or crane. Example. The warehouse workers loaded the crates onto wooden pallets for easy transportation. Pallet. Pallet is a noun that has multiple meanings. It can refer to a thin board or slab with a hole for the thumb, used by artists for holding and mixing colours while painting. It can also refer to the range of colours used by a particular artist or in a particular work. Example, as a board for mixing colours. The artist dipped her brush into various colours on her palette before starting to paint. Example, as a range of colours. The autumn landscape was filled with a rich palette of reds, oranges and yellows. Palette, palette is a noun that refers to the roof of the mouth in humans or animals. It can also refer to a person's sense of taste or their liking for certain flavours. Example, anatomy. The spicy food burned the roof of her palate. Example, sense of taste. He had a sophisticated palate and could discern subtle differences in flavours. Analysis. In summary, palette is a platform for holding goods. Palette is a board for mixing colours or a range of colours. And palette refers to the roof of the mouth or a person's sense of taste. Sight. Sight and sight. What's the difference? Sight. Sight is a verb that means to quote or refer to something as evidence or support for an argument or statement. It can also mean to officially summon someone to appear in court. Example. In his research paper, he cited several scholarly articles to support his argument. Example. The prosecutor plans to cite several precedents from previous cases to support her argument during the trial. Cite. Cite can function as both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to the ability to see or something that is seen. As a verb, it means to see or catch sight of something. Example, noun, the beautiful landscape, was a breathtaking sight. Example, verb. From the hilltop, they sighted a herd of deer grazing in the valley. Sight. Sight is a noun that refers to a specific place or location, especially one where something notable or significant occurs or is situated. It can also refer to a website on the internet. Example. The archaeologists excavated the ancient burial site to uncover artifacts from the past. Analysis. In summary, sight means to quote or refer to something, sight refers to the ability to see or something that is seen, and sight refers to a specific place or location. Please support us by subscribing to our channel. Click on the subscribe button. Perpetuate and perpetrate. What's the difference? Perpetuate. Perpetuate means to cause something to continue indefinitely, often by prolonging its existence or ensuring its persistence over time. Example. The government's policies inadvertently perpetuate social inequality by favouring the wealthy. Example. The media's constant portrayal of certain stereotypes perpetuates harmful biases and prejudices in society. Perpetrate. Perpetrate means to carry out or commit an illegal, harmful or immoral act, typically a crime or wrongdoing. Example. The criminals were apprehended for attempting to perpetrate a bank robbery. Example. Detectives discovered evidence that linked the suspect to the group of individuals who were planning to perpetrate a series of fraudulent schemes.
Analysis. In summary, perpetuate refers to causing something to continue or persist, while perpetrate refers to committing or carrying out an act, typically a crime or wrongdoing. Rain, rain, and rain. What's the difference? Rain. Rain is a noun that refers to water that falls in droplets from clouds in the atmosphere. It is a form of precipitation. Example, the forecast predicts heavy rain showers for tomorrow afternoon. Rain. Rain can function as both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to a strap or rope attached to a horse's bridle, used by a rider to control or guide the horse. As a verb, it means to restrain or control something, especially by using reins. Example, noun. The rider gently pulled on the reins to signal the horse to stop. Example, verb. The teacher had to rein in the student's excitement during the class presentation. Rain. Rain is a noun that refers to the period during which a sovereign rules or holds power, or more generally, to a period of dominance or control. Example. King Arthur's reign was characterized by peace and prosperity throughout the kingdom. Analysis. In summary, rain refers to water falling from the sky. Rain refers to a strap used to control a horse or the act of controlling something, and rain refers to the period of rule or dominance of a sovereign or authority. Peer and peer, what's the difference? Peer. Peer can function as both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to a person who is of equal standing with another in a group, such as peers in a classroom or colleagues in a profession. As a verb, it means to look keenly or with difficulty at someone or something. Example, noun. She felt comfortable discussing her ideas with her peers during the group project. Example, verb. He peered into the darkness, trying to make out shapes in the shadows. Peer. Peer is a noun that refers to a structure built out into the water, typically to serve as a landing place for boats or as a promenade. Example, the fishermen gathered at the end of the pier, casting their lines into the sea. Analysis. In summary, pier refers to a person of equal standing or to look keenly, while pier refers to a structure extending into the water for docking or promenading. Pair and pare. What's the difference? Pair. Pear is a noun that refers to a sweet, juicy fruit with a rounded shape and a narrow, tapering top. Pears are typically green or yellow when ripe and have a crisp texture. Example, she enjoyed a ripe, juicy pear for dessert after dinner. Pare. Para is a verb that means to trim or cut away the outer layer or excess parts of something, especially food. It can also mean to reduce or diminish something to a smaller extent. Example. She carefully pared the apple, removing the skin in thin strips. Analysis. In summary, pear refers to a type of fruit, while para refers to the act of trimming or cutting away the outer layer of something. Saw. Saw and saw. What's the difference? Saw. Saw is a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to a cutting tool with a tooth blade used for cutting through materials such as wood or metal. As a verb, it means to cut something using a saw. Example. Noun. He used a handsaw to cut the wood into smaller pieces. Example. Verb. She sawed through the metal pipe to remove the damaged section. Saw. Saw is an adjective 
that describes a sensation of pain, tenderness, or discomfort, often due to injury, illness, or irritation. Example. After the long hike, her feet were sore and blistered. Example. Emotional distress. The argument left a sore feeling between them that lingered for weeks. Sore. Sore is a verb that means to fly or rise high in the air, especially with little effort. It can also be used metaphorically to describe rapid or dramatic increase or improvement. Example. The eagle soared gracefully through the sky, riding the currents of warm air. Example. Investor confidence soared after the company announced record-breaking profits for the quarter. Analysis. In summary, saw refers to a cutting tool or the action of cutting. Saw describes pain or discomfort, and saw means to fly high or to rise rapidly. Weather, weather, and weather. What's the difference? Weather. Weather is a noun that refers to the state of the atmosphere at a particular place and time, including temperature, humidity, precipitation, wind, and other meteorological conditions. Example. The weather forecast predicts rain and thunderstorms for tomorrow. Weather. Weather is a conjunction used to introduce a choice between alternatives or to indicate uncertainty or doubt. Example. I'm not sure whether I should go to the party or stay home. Weather. Weather is a noun that refers to a castrated male sheep, especially one that is raised for its meat. Example. The farmer raised weathers for sale at the market. Analysis. In summary. Weather refers to atmospheric conditions, weather introduces a choice or indicates uncertainty, and weather refers to a castrated male sheep. Who, whose, and whose. What's the difference? Who, who is a pronoun used to ask about or refer to a person or people. Example. Who is coming to the party? In this example, who is used to inquire about the identity of the person attending the party? Whose? Whose is a pronoun used to indicate possession or ownership. It is used to ask about the person or thing that something belongs to. Example. Whose phone is this? In this example, whose is asking about the ownership of the phone. Whose, whose, is a contraction of the words who is or who has. It is used to combine the pronoun who with either the verb is or has. Example, who's going to the concert tonight? In this example, whose is asking about the identity of the person going to the concert. Example, who's been to Paris before? In this example, whose is a contraction of who has, and it is used to ask about the person who has visited Paris before. Analysis. In summary, who is used to refer to a person, whose is used to indicate possession, and whose is a contraction of who is or who has. Peak, peak, and peak. What's the difference? Peak. Peak can function as both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to the pointed top of a mountain or hill, or the highest point or level of something. As a verb, it means to reach the highest point or level. Example, noun. They reached the peak of the mountain just before sunrise. Example, verb. Her performance peaked during the final act of the play, peak. Peak is a verb that means to look quickly or briefly, especially from a hidden or secret place. Example, she peeked through the curtains to see who was at the door. Peak, 
peak can function as both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to a feeling of irritation or resentment, typically aroused by a perceived slight or indignity. As a verb, it means to stimulate or arouse interest, curiosity, or resentment. Example, noun. She felt a sense of pique when her idea was ignored in the meeting. Example, verb. The intriguing plot piqued her curiosity, and she couldn't wait to read the next chapter. Analysis. In summary, peak refers to the highest point. Peak means to look quickly or briefly, and peak refers to a feeling of irritation or to stimulate interest. Jealousy and envy. What's the difference? Jealousy. Jealousy refers to the feeling of resentment or insecurity caused by someone else's possessions, achievements, or advantages. It involves a fear of losing something one possesses to another person. Example. She felt jealousy towards her friend's new promotion because she wished she had received the recognition instead. Envy. Envy refers to the desire to have something that belongs to another person. It involves longing for what someone else has, whether it be possessions, abilities, or achievements. Example. He couldn't help but feel a twinge of envy when he saw his neighbor's luxurious new car parked in the driveway. Analysis. In summary, jealousy involves fear of losing something one possesses to another person, while envy involves longing for what someone else has. Pride and arrogance. What's the difference? Pride. Pride refers to a sense of satisfaction or fulfillment derived from one's achievements, qualities, or possessions. It can also refer to a feeling of dignity, self-respect, or confidence in oneself. Example. She felt a sense of pride as she watched her children perform in the school play, knowing how much effort they had put into their roles. Arrogance. Arrogance refers to an attitude of superiority, self-importance, or overbearing confidence. It involves an excessive belief in one's own abilities or qualities, often accompanied by a disregard for others. Example. His arrogance made it difficult for others to work with him, as he always believed he knew best and dismissed their ideas without consideration. Analysis. In summary, pride involves a positive sense of self-worth or satisfaction, while arrogance involves an excessive belief in one's superiority over others. Poor, 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 and poor. What's the difference? Poor, a tiny opening, usually in the skin or a surface, through which substances may pass. Example, the scientists observed the pores of the plant leaves under the microscope. Example, after a long day at work, she enjoyed indulging in a relaxing skincare routine, gently cleansing her face to unclog her pores and rejuvenate her skin. Poor, to cause a liquid to flow in a steady stream, typically from a container. Example, she poured herself a glass of water from the pitcher. Poor, lacking sufficient money, resources, or means of support. Not having enough of something. Example, many families in the area live in poor conditions due to the lack of affordable housing. Poor, the foot of an animal, especially a quadruped, with claws or nails. Example, the dog gently placed its paw on the child's hand. Analysis. In summary, paw refers to a tiny opening. Paw means to cause a liquid to flow. Paw describes a lack of sufficient resources. And paw is the foot of an animal. Query, inquiry, and inquiry. What's the difference? Query. 
a question, especially one addressed to an official or organization seeking information or clarification. Example, he sent a query to the customer service department asking about the status of his order. Example, the journalist submitted a query to the editor-in-chief regarding the accuracy of the information in the article. Inquiry, a request for information, an official investigation or formal examination. Example, the police launched an inquiry into the cause of the accident. Example, she made an inquiry at the library desk to find out if the book she needed was available. Inquiry, a formal investigation or request for information, often used in British English. Example, the government committee conducted an inquiry into the safety standards of the construction site. Example, the company received an inquiry from a potential client interested in their services. Analysis. In summary, query is a general question seeking information. Inquiry refers to a formal investigation or request for information, and inquiry is similar to inquiry, but is more commonly used in British English. We hope this video was helpful and you have increased your vocabulary and have a better understanding of the most confusing words. Please subscribe to our channel for more English learning.